Great, this is the last part uh, of the lecture on modeling with matrices and vectors. And um, there's a couple of interesting things that I want to do here. So the first thing I want to do uh, is I really want to re-emphasize how I'm using this subscript index k. Okay, so remember we had uh, like a vector x k plus 1 equals a matrix A times that vector x sub k. Now this is often um, a confusing point for students who are you know, first time users of MATLAB or mathematical modeling using matrices and vectors. And I really want to demysticize this. It's simple, straightforward, not a big deal. The most simple and intuitive way that I think of what this index k means is essentially this index is telling me um, like what time I'm measuring the state x, right? x is a vector of measurements, and I have this state on the time k and at time k plus 1, and so on and so forth. This could be the kth day, day 4 and day 5, day 6, day 7, day 7, day 8, so on and so forth, okay? So this model tells me if I have my state at day k, I can get my state at day k plus 1 or time k plus 1. And um, so these don't always have to, to refer to increasing time, but it's a nice physical, intuitive way for us to think about these um, to start with. Okay, so let's think about a really simple uh, couple of examples of population dynamics. Okay, so when you think about um, biological systems or physical systems in general, one of the common themes is that they change in time. Okay, anything most things interesting are not purely static. They're changing and, you know, growing or decaying or oscillating or doing something interesting in time, okay? And so that's another reason why I'm using this to denote uh, advancing time. So let's think about the population of a group of bunnies, okay? So what do we know that bunnies like to do? Bunnies like to increase in numbers, okay? So if I have a population of bunnies xk, let's say that k refers to year k, okay, this is a year, then, then maybe I can say that the population of bunnies in the next year, xk plus 1, is equal to, well, we, we think that these bunnies are growing, right? Their, their population is expanding. Maybe it's expanding by 5% every year. Okay, so 1.05 times x sub k. Okay, what this is telling me is that if I have uh, 100 bunnies this year, I'll have 105 bunnies next year. If I have 1,000 bunnies this year, I'll have 1,050 bunnies next year, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is number of bunnies. Okay, now let's say that I have another species of animal. They don't eat bunnies. Um, let's say deer. Okay, so I have y, k. These are deer. Uh, or bears, maybe. Uh, do bears eat bunnies? I don't think so. Okay, let's call them bears. But let's say that the bear population is actually dwindling for some reason. Maybe, um, who knows? Let's say that the bear population is actually decreasing. So yk plus 1, the number of bears next year is less than the number of bears this year. Let's say that it's 95% um, next year of what it was this year. So every year I'm decreasing uh, the number of bears by some amount. Okay, makes sense? Now, this is a really simple and contrived system where these are completely independent. I'm assuming that bunnies live their lives, bears live their lives, and they never, uh, you know, mix or meet or eat or whatever. Uh, then I can write this as a system of equations. I can say xk plus 1 and yk plus 1. This is a vector. Okay, this is kind of like this vector here, equals a matrix A here um, times xk and yk. Okay, so how do I read this off? So how do my bunnies next year depend on my bunnies and my bears this year? Well, they're 1.05 times the number of bunnies this year, and they don't care at all about bears. They have no dependency on bears. So this is my number zero. 
Okay, my bears next year. How do they depend on bunnies and bears? Well, they have no dependency on bunnies. And the number of bears next year is going to be 0.95 times the number of bears this year. Okay, so this is my model, you know, vector x at year k plus 1 is equal to matrix A times vector x at year k. Here this vector x is, you know, this whole xk and yk. Okay, so this is a relatively simple uh, example of population dynamics. Eventually what we're going to do later, um, later in this section, we're going to allow our bears to eat our bunnies um, and we'll get some coupling terms in here and maybe some other interesting, interesting terms that make this a more fascinating and realistic problem. But for now, let's just let bunnies grow and bears decay. Okay, and I kind of am already telling you what I think is going to happen. I think that the number of bunnies is going to explode and I think that eventually all the bears might die out, unfortunately. Okay, uh, so let's code this up in MATLAB and then let's plot the results, okay? Now, I didn't have to couple the system. I didn't have to write this as a vector system times a matrix A because my system was simple enough that I could have just said bunnies do their things, that's one equation. Bears do their thing, that's another equation. But eventually I'm going to want to couple these. I'm going to say, well, if there's more bunnies, maybe the bears have enough food to live more. Um, things like that. So I might want to keep this as a system so I can play with it later. Okay, so now it's time to uh, code this up. Okay, and we're going to code this up in the following way. So we're going to um, Okay, we're going to create uh, our A matrix. So we're going to say A equals uh, 1.05, 0, and the first row, 0, 0.95. Okay, that's my matrix A that tells me if, you know, how many bunnies and bears I have this year, how many bunnies and bears I'll have next year. Uh, let's start off our population. So we have something like, um, Let's say x not. This is my initial population. Let's say that I have um, a thousand bunnies and a thousand bears. Okay, just start with a bunch of bunnies and a bunch of bears. And what we're going to do is we're going to step through uh, the system. We're going to step through, um, you know, year one to year two to year three and dot, dot, dot to year n. And we're just going to see what happens. Okay. Okay, good. Um, and I'm going to keep track of all of the history of what I've been doing. So every year I'm going to take and keep track of this. Um, so I'm going to have a big, um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to have a big matrix, big x. And every time I create, every time I step forward another year, I'm going to take that vector and I'm going to put it into my big matrix X. So X is going to have X1, my population on year one, X2, my population on year two, and eventually all the way up to Xn, my population on year n. Okay? And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, my population in, in uh, year zero is this thing. So big X, um, maybe I'll call this year one. My initial condition is what's on year one. So the first column of this big matrix X is just X1. Good. And now for K equals... Um, how many years should we step forward? 10 years? Let's do 10 years, okay? For k equals uh, 1 to 10, we're going to say that um, for k equals 1 to 10, we're going to say that x 
at the k plus oneth column, okay, if I know x1, I can compute x2. So x at the k plus oneth column is a times the kth column, okay? So x, x sub k plus 1 is equal to a times x sub k. So the k plus 1th column is just equal to a times the kth column. Okay, that's basically just writing down this, uh, this system of equations that we're working with. Okay, uh, and then I can say end, and this will step through 10 whole years of this iteration uh, and advance from year one all the way up to, I think, year 11, because it's gonna step through 10 advances starting from year one. Okay, so good, and then uh, what should we do? Well, we should probably, uh, let's just run it and then we'll see what, what's happening. So let's run this. Good, I think it ran with, nope, they didn't like that. Uh, so let's look at the size of A, two by two. Let's look at the size of big X. Uh, okay, so it thinks it's a row vector of size one by two. So I need to, I need to transpose it and turn it into a column vector, right? This, um, we're multiplying our matrix by column vectors, not row vectors. So I need to make sure that I'm, I'm working with, uh, with column vectors here. Uh, I think I just did this, did this wrong. Um, good. Yeah, I was doing the k plus oneth row when really I want the k plus oneth column. Okay, this is a pretty common uh, thing that happens in MATLAB, is just getting rows and columns mixed up. It happens to all of us. Okay, so the colon, comma, k plus one means I want every row of the k plus oneth column. So I'm gonna pull out that, that whole column, the k plus oneth column equals a times the kth column of x. Okay, hopefully this will run. Good, that one actually ran. And so now we can do things like look at the size of x. And this is good, this is a two by 11 size x as we expect that it should be. Right, so this big x matrix, it has two states, the number of bunnies and number of bears for 11 years, starting at year one and we advanced it 10 times up to year 11. Okay, so it's a size two by 11 matrix, that's great. And if we want to look at how the population of bunnies evolves, we just plot the first row. If we want to look at how the population of bears evolves, we just plot the second row. Super simple, okay? So I'm going to plot uh, the first row of x, so plot x of um, this thing. And we see that as we expected, our uh, population of bunnies is actually increasing significantly. It goes from population 1,000 all the way up to a bit above 1,600. Now, I would probably label these if I was being careful. I'd say X label is uh, time in years, and Y label is bunny population. Always good to label your plots, okay? So the bunny population is increasing in time, and if you plotted this for longer, you'd see that it's increasing exponentially. It's really, really gonna pick up, and eventually it'll blow up, okay? Now, unfortunately, the bears uh, are in a different situation, so if we plot the second row of this big X matrix that's storing all of my information, then we find that sadly, uh, the bear population is in slow decline. So it goes from 1,000 all the way down uh, to just under 600, and it's just gonna keep dropping also exponentially until eventually it goes to zero, okay? And what we're going to find uh, in the next lecture is that this, this phenomenon of my, my state, my population of bunnies or my population of bears, either growing to infinity or decaying to zero depends strongly on these numbers here, okay? 
So the fact that this number is larger than 1 means that bunnies are going to blow up. The fact that this number is smaller than 1 means that bunnies are, uh, bears are going to go to 0. Okay? And this is a really, really important concept in math. So first of all, we can model the progression of a system in time, stepping it forward using this matrix uh, system of equations. And then in the next lecture, we're going to see how the entries of A determine what that system behavior will look like in long times. Okay, thank you.